Hey there, so we've been taking a look at the HP Elite Desk Mini here a lot lately, but it's because it's a very interesting system, especially considering the fact that once you upgrade it with the RX 560, it becomes the cheapest mini PC on the market with a dedicated graphics card. And I want to see how this dedicated graphics card compares with a top of the line modern integrated graphics from AMD. But first, this video is brought to you by Instant Gaming and to celebrate this new partnership, we are hosting a giveaway. So click the link down below to sign up and you have a chance to win any game from Instant Gaming's catalog. A catalog which not just includes great deals for PC games, but they also have console titles as well. So if you're like me and you're constantly in the need for cheap games, Instant Gaming is there for you. Check them out down below and be sure to sign up for that giveaway don't miss out on a chance to get a brand new title for free just click the link down below and thank you instant gaming for sponsoring this video this is the minisform um 780 xtx it's not the most recent system but it might as well be considering the fact that the 8000 series was just a refresh of the chip that's in here so it's effectively the same performance as a top of the line amd mini pc right now and we're going to see how these two to compare in a variety of different games. From what we saw with the testing of the RX 560 in this system, it certainly does seem to be very TDP limited and it isn't able to hit very high clock speeds at all. On top of that, the RX 560 wasn't exactly a powerhouse of a system when it was first released. I'm curious to see how it exactly stacks up with a top of the line iGPU. There might be some interesting surprises in these tests. Let's jump right on in. So the first game we're going to be taking a look at is Bioshock Infinite running at the ultra graphic settings. We're going to be moving through a bunch of different games, slowly progressing through the years. This game, of course, releasing all the way back in 2013 is pretty much around the types of games that both the Ryzen 5 2400G and the RX 5600 were designed to really play and do well in, and it does do a pretty significant job of getting an almost 60 FPS average, but that is put to shame almost immediately when we factor in the 7800M getting a 55% increase in its FPS average and also seeing a 33% increase in those 1% lows, effectively clearing well past 60 FPS average and getting almost into high refresh rate levels. So already we're seeing a massive increase with the modern integrated graphics. And moving on to the next game, we have Alien Isolation also running at the ultra graphics settings and another title that is well within the range of what the 5600 was really designed to excel at. And it does do another great going here, but immediately gets humiliated by the 780M where we see a massive 96 0.5% increase in the FPS average and an equally impressive 100% increase in the 1% lows. Effectively double the performance happening here. So while both are great gaming experiences, they are not really within the same league of each other at all. And it really is impressive to see the iGPU of the 7840HS actually hold up really, really well against an actual dedicated graphics card even though the 560 isn't exactly a powerhouse Moving on to Batman Arkham Knight, we start to get into some of the more demanding titles. So this is running with the lowest in-game graphics settings. And we see that both systems do a great job and give really impressive levels of performance. And you might also understand why this is a title that is still being benchmarked to this day. Because of the fact that it is a demanding title that doesn't have FSR, you're really able to push some systems with it and it doesn't let them hide behind some modern technology like that. But we end up seeing a pretty impressive 40% increase in the FPS average and a 38.4% increase in the 1% lows. So effectively a 40% increase on both, and that does make the experience of actually playing the game better, but it's not earth shatteringly different considering the fact that a 50 FPS average with 1% lows of 39 is still a great gaming experience. But what this does mean is that with the 780M, we do have the headroom to start turning up some of those graphics settings. And with this title, you 
don't really end up losing too much performance by actually going from the lowest up to medium. The next title is one that I was very interested to see because Rainbow Six Siege, especially at the lowest graphic settings and running with FSR at performance, is going to be extremely CPU limited. And what we're able to see here is what the limits of Zen 1 versus Zen 4 really are here. And you'll see that there is a pretty massive difference in terms of performance, both of them giving a great result, but this is the difference between using a 144 hertz display or a 240 hertz display. And the increase in those 1% lows is also really nice to see. So overall impressive results for the 780M, but it should be noted that the 5600 is still able to give a great result here and you'll be able to utilize a high refresh rate display perfectly fine. If we take a look at Guardians of the Galaxy running with the lowest in-game graphics settings and using FSR with ultra quality settings, we end up seeing a massive difference between the two systems. The FPS average sees a 71% uplift and the 1% lows see a 69% uplift with the new or iGPU. And this really feels like a generational jump because you're going from essentially a PlayStation 4 to a PlayStation 4 in terms of the level of playability in this title. Of course, Tiny Tina's Wonderland at the lowest in-game graphics settings and with FSR is a great performer on a large variety of hardware, but here we do end up seeing a pretty massive gap in terms of the overall performance. The FPS average ends up seeing a 104.7% increase and the 1% lows show an even more impressive 122.5% 5% increase. This effectively means that with the lowest in-game graphics settings, the 5600 is essentially at its limit. While the 780M is actually able to let you turn up graphics settings so that you don't have to be at the very low graphics settings, you can be at normal graphics settings. And that does mean that you are going to get a visually more impressive experience, though it is nice to see that both are able to play the game in general. I'm not going to sit here and say that a 42 FPS average with 1% lows of 31 is going to be a perfect gaming experience, but it is doable on both systems, though again, there is a drastic difference in terms of playability. And these drastic differences really start to become more apparent as we move closer and closer to modern games, where it really seems like the 560 is just falling apart. And this is another title here with Mountain Blade Banner Lord, where we see a 76% increase in the FPS average, and the 1% lows see a 103% increase. What this means is, again, we have that headroom to be able to turn up graphics settings so that we don't have to play at the most potato quality settings. It is one of the biggest benefits of the 780M over most other iGPUs. It's the fact that you actually have the capability of messing around with graphics settings without having to sacrifice your performance. And the last game that we're going to be taking a look at here in these formal comparisons is Returnal running with the lowest in-game graphics settings and FSR set to the performance preset. And this is one of the most demanding titles out there right now. And you'll see that neither system is giving a remarkable gaming experience, though again, there is a pretty massive difference between the two. Where while we see some impressive improvements in those FPS averages, it's really those improvements in the 1% the lows that are the star here, where we see a 127% increase in 1% lows. Though that's made way less impressive when you realize that that's only boosting it up to 25, which is a abysmal showing for 1% lows. So in general, neither system is going to be great in a title like this. And it shows that even with the most modern of iGPUs, these heavier titles are just not going to be doable. So what did we end up learning here? Well, I was actually kind of impressed to see that the 780M outdid the 560 by this much. Now, to be fair, this is an extremely power limited 560 actually measuring from the wall the um 780 was using more wattage because while running the guardians of the galaxy benchmark it was using 105 watts while the hp elite desk mini was only using around 94 at most 
but of course the performance difference really just makes up for that slight increase in power but the price difference between the two systems is also a key factor here if you already have this hp elite desk mini and you've had it for a couple of years for 60 dollars the average of 30 percent increase that you get for the 560 is worthwhile but that being said if you're more in the market for something higher performance well this is not some cheat to get you top level performance at a discounted price you are definitely sacrificing a lot sometimes half the performance it's definitely something to keep in mind but i'll catch you guys in the next one